When John F. Kennedy went to Congress and said, we can send a man to the moon and return him safely home again in a decade, he was calling the country to a higher purpose. He was getting people to think beyond their own daily lives to what unites us as a country, what brings us together to build a better future for our children. And that really is at the center of managing the challenges that we're confronted by today with global warming. So I set out with my co-author of Bracken Hendricks to provide that vision to talk about the Americans who all across the country today are building and creating this new clean energy revolution that the world needs and America needs. A book that's really about the stories of Americans, the stories about community leaders, about entrepreneurs, about people who are taking a risk now to invent the future that we want to live in. And when Americans see this, when they see real people doing real things with real products, that's when America will move to tackle global warming. We talk to people in inner cities in Oakland, California, and in the South Bronx. And these are places that are seeing the opportunity for new investment to flow in, for new infrastructure, new jobs, new industries, a chance to rebuild their lives, rebuild their communities around these green principles, around a more sustainable economy. Because America shines when there's technological transition. We're the country that, that really uh, builds our economy when there's a burst of new technological change. And we try and, and chart a roadmap for how we're going to get it done in terms of policies, also in terms of new politics. There's a whole wave of new organizers who are coming together, everyone from elected leaders. We talk about what, what governors uh, like Bill Richardson in New Mexico has done with, with clean energy and climate, or Governor Rendell in, in Pennsylvania recruiting clean energy industries to rebuild his manufacturing base all the way to, to student organizers like, like Billy Parrish, who's leading a campus climate challenge that's retrofitting schools across the country, or evangelical Christians like Richard Sizek, who's talking about stewardship for the earth in purely faith-based terms. The global warming problem has been a quiet bomb that has now gone off. This is a moment of great opportunity, and ultimately Apollo's Fire is a book about hope. It's a book about what we can do as a people if we come together.